What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be starting a fashion brand business document series, running you guys through key essential documents that you'll need to know as a fashion brand owner, work with suppliers and buyers. On this episode, we'll be looking at the purchase order, otherwise known as the PO. What is a purchase order? what key fields you'll want to include and ultimately how would you format it and how can it benefit your business that's exactly what we'll be discussing on today's episode in a quick and easy rundown and everything you wanted to know about the purchase order hey guys and welcome to fit design tv so glad to have you here on this channel we discuss all things sports fashion graphic design manufacturing and technology we'll discuss key topics answer pressing questions and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. Before we get into the contents of a typical purchase order, let's first try to unpack what a PO is. And it's quite simple. A purchase order is a commercial document representing an official offer from a buyer to a seller to purchase specific product or services. This document will outline the types, quantities, and agreed to prices that the buyer and the seller have agreed on and represents an official offer to buy from a seller. This is an integral part of any business that deals with external vendors. When it comes to formatting a purchase order, first, you'll always wanna start off on company letterhead. Every single business document that you extract or you deliver as part of your business should be branded and should follow the same vision and aesthetic as your company. One way to maintain a sense of professionalism and to have suppliers take you even more seriously is to present yourself well and present yourself consistently. So it's always good to have these official documents on official company letterhead. Then moving forward, you want to document or you want to detail what the name of the document is. Because you'll have different business documents, you might have one that's an invoice, you want have one that's a quotation, you might have one that's a commercial invoice, so on and so forth. The first thing you'll want to call out on the top left hand side or in the center is what the name of the document is. Here it's a purchase order, so we'll call that out in all caps. Next, you'll want to include your company name right underneath that. Your company name might be different than your logo mark or your word mark that you used. For example, your company name might be Nike, but your official legally registered name might be Nike Sportswear Limited, LTD. So it's important to have your officially registered name in the document. Next, we'll move over into your purchase order number. Your PO number is essential. It is going to give you the ability to call back to this specific PO, especially when you begin working with the same supplier on multiple orders or different suppliers. Having the ability to trace back a specific PO is key. In this case, we could categorize our PO as PO dot dot SP000001. The specifics of this naming convention are irrelevant. You'll want to develop one that works within your own organization. Next, once you've called out your PO number, it's always essential to start off every document with the date issued. This is going to be essential because the PO represents the start of a long purchasing journey with your supplier. Being able to call back to the original date a PO was placed is key. So obviously, if we're issuing the PO on October 23, we're going to want to date the date as October 23. That's when the PO was ordered. Moving forward, this will be key and allow you to continuously call back. Next, your buyer's information. Your buyer's information is the person making the purchase and essentially the person issuing the PO. When it comes to the fields you wanna include, obviously who the order is by, and that would be the official company name. Let's just say it's Spectre Sportswear Limited. And then you'll wanna include the name of the person in charge, whether that's Shadi Aldada, so that's my name. Let's just say I'm in charge of that order as I own the brand Spectre. And then you'll wanna call out your telephone number. This can be your personal business telephone number or your office line. Keep it professional and make sure that you're reachable at this number in the event that the buyer or the vendor needed to get in touch with you. Moving forward, include your email, so the contact person. And then lastly, you'll want to include the address. So this could be your business address. This could be your officially registered business or legal address. This is going to take you into the next step, which is where to ship to. 
you can disregard this section if where you're going to ship to is the same as the address of the person ordering. But in a case where you have corporate and you have the retail stores, you want to make sure to call out the specific retail store that you're going to be shipping these goods to. In this case, or if it's a warehouse, or if it's a retail store, or if it's another supplier that is within your infrastructure, make sure you call them out. So in this case, let's just say we want to ship to Spectre's boutique store in London. Let's just say we have a boutique store there. We would say to Spectre uh, LLC or whatever. Maybe there's another company name that is registered for that brand in the country that you're trying to send it to. Then you call out the name of the person in charge over there. That could be whoever it is. Then the telephone number of the store or the place it's going to be shipped out to or the person in charge, email, and lastly, the address, the delivery address. Again, disregard this if your delivery address and your buyer's address are identical. Don't disregard it in the case of fashion where sometimes the person making the purchase is not necessarily the person that's going to be receiving delivery and is related to them in some way, shape, or form. Now we're going to move on to the main component of every purchase order. This is a table either created in Excel, numbers, or even pages if you're on a Mac that outlines the order details. And the following categories should always be incorporated into every order details table. Number one, starting from left to right, is your style number. A style is a specific colorway of a specific product. Let's just say you have a product range of a performance t-shirt that you're launching in three colors. You have them in black, white, and red. Each of these colorways would have its own style name. Different companies have different style naming conventions, but I'll give you guys a quick one to get you started. You can always start off with the year of the collection. So here we're launching a collection for spring, summer. This is 2021. Next, you go into the abbreviation of the collection. So this is a spring, summer collection. Therefore, it's SS. So 2021 SS. Next, you want to move into the product variant number. So if this is our performance shirt, it's the first product in this collection. We'll label it as 01. And then for every specific colorway, we'll add another two numbers or digits that would represent the specific color. So black would be 0101. White would be 0102. And then red would be 0103. So in this case, the naming convention for the style number of a red t-shirt would be 2021 SS 0103. Now moving forward, here we want to give a brief description of the garment. So this is right after the style number, a brief description of the garment. We could just say it's a slim fit performance shirt, raglan sleeve. Next, give the color. Either you can give a generic color name, black, white, or red, or you could get specific with the Pantone used if you know it. In this case, instead of saying red, we could say fiery red with the specific TCX attached to it. Next, and probably most important, is your sizing split. Let's just say you're ordering 40 t-shirts split across XS to XL. You could say I want 5XS, 10 small, 10 medium, 10 large, and 5 extra large, creating a total quantity of 40 in this specific red performance t-shirt. Then give your total quantity. So your total quantity should be the sum of your individual sizes ordered. At the same time, give your unit cost. So let's just say a shirt costs $7.75. Then your total cost. Your total cost should be your line item cost. This is the quantity ordered per style times by the unit price. Here, you'll add the total cost of each of the styles that you have ordered here in black, white, and red, and that will give you your subtotal. If you need to add VAT or any additional sales tax, you'll need to include it into there. If not, then just go straight onto your order total. Now that we've gone through the key order details, let's look at one of the other key drivers of a purchase order. And this is your agreed to payment terms and payment details. These are agreed to beforehand and they should be outlined in every purchase order. So first you'll wanna mention your payment terms. What's the deposit size? Is it 25%, 50%, 75%? So this is the deposit required from the buyer so that the seller can start working. And then mention your payment terms on this. So is this an immediate payment? Is it net 15, net 30? 
Net 30 essentially means that you pledge to pay this invoice within 30 days of issuing it. So if you're going to be paying this 50% within 30 days, mention net 30. And again, this shouldn't be something that you're agreeing to by yourself. This should be an agreement between the buyer and the supplier. Next, moving forward, mention your payment terms. Check what's acceptable with your supplier. Is it cash, credit, PayPal, so on and so forth. If you're using a credit card, give all relevant details your supplier will need in order to process the payment. And then give your delivery terms. What methods are using FOB, DDP. We've done a separate video that I highly recommend you guys check out on our channel that outlines this here. We want DDP. So we want our duties and taxes included. And we essentially want the full price of the order shipped to our door. So we could say we want to ship with a sky courier with DDP or delivery duty paid. Next, give your tentative delivery date. This should be again pre, uh, agreed to between the supplier and the buyer. And you could say something like, we agree to ship by May 5, 2021. And then lastly, your packing requirements and other details and other requirements. So your packing requirements can be something like, each product should be shipped within a clear poly bag that we supply the artwork for with a hang tag. And then other requirements can be something simple like, we should set a date by which we can potentially revise our order if we need to increase or decrease depending on our agreed to terms and conditions, and it should have a cap in order to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Special requirements will change depending on the situation. So this is something that you'll need to take up with your specific supplier. That's pretty much it guys. When it comes to putting together a comprehensive purchase order, that's going to set you on the right track for future orders of their suppliers. Do bear in mind that these types of business documents, though not necessarily required by law are essential as part of keeping up with the demands and the requirements of your business. Your suppliers will be able to take you much more seriously if you present yourself in a way that's professional and knowledgeable about the industry. The last thing a supplier wants to do is work with people who don't know what they're doing. Bear in mind that this business environment is extremely fast paced and we should all do our part to try to be as professional and as organized as we can to make things easier for ourselves, but also for others. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more other different business related documents and how to outline them and what key articles and details to add in these documents, let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you want to see. I'm thinking of putting together one for our packing list and a commercial order. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really helps more people see these videos. And thank you guys once again for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.